This is Sway. 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 In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. Shake your body. Wake your fuck ass up. That crust out your eyes. Greatness is your sweetest dream and your worst nightmare at the same time. Mm, nine minutes into the hour. Sway the morning shave four five. That's our special guest. Yes, it's Tony Gaskins. You were listening to a, a excerpt from his new motivational album called Greatness. Good morning, Tony. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Yes, and you were as far as a husband and father, an author, a motivational speaker, and people know you. Uh, you have over 30 million people listening to what you say every day, and you decided to make this album. What was the purpose for you making the album? The purpose was the power of words. You know, I hit a rock in my life after high school to where I was being raised by rappers and the rappers became my mentor. So here I was, I left a two parent home where my father was a minister and I get to college and I'm searching for myself and the music is giving me a blueprint for success, but it was all a lie. So I found myself in college selling drugs out of the dorm room, stealing from stores. Those preacher's kids. <laughs> you know, but but it wasn't just, you know, the preacher's <laughs> kids. It was a lot of us who right. we were looking for affirmation and we were listening to pop culture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I realized the power of words then and how it affects our subconscious mind. And we began to move towards it without even realizing it, whether it's smoking, drinking, trying to be cool, trying to be hard, whatever it is. And, it almost ruined me. I got kicked out of college right. after three years, you lost a full, full football scholarship. scholarship. And so it was at that point to where I started to really look within and ask myself, who am I? Who am I listening to? Who do I want to be and how will I get there? And that's when I started focusing on greatness. And I thought it was appropriate for you to come today because the word greatness, and we have these these little puppies and these little babies here, in high school, who the world the world is ahead of them. And I just wanted us to talk about greatness. They have the the world is in front of them, and I wanted to give them some wisdom. You know, before a lot of them, there's some seniors in here, there's some freshmen, and you guys can turn it around if any of y'all are wilding out. You know, <laughs> right, right. We were talking about one of the. Um, one of the excerpts that you have in your album is called Eagles and Turkeys. Right. And I wanted you to kind of give them the analogy. What does that mean? Eagles and Turkeys, what it is, is when you study the eagle, you find out that an eagle soars alone. And it well, soars. Can you, can you break down what the eagle is, though? When you say break it down, what what does it mean to you? Because it might mean something different to you. I, I'm thinking E-G-O. Are are... Eagle. Eagle. Oh, the bird? The bird. Oh, okay. Like oh, the turkey. I'm like, oh, okay, my bad. Eagle. I'm going <laughs> deep on you, Tony. I'm like, I'm into this, man. All right. Yeah. My bad. Eagles and turkeys. Okay, Eagle, that's wow. what it is. Yeah. All right. E Eagles versus turkeys. And, and I heard the concept a while back, and I began to think about it, and I realized, you know, it's the turkeys that's flocking, flocking together, and they end up on the dinner plate. So you can follow the crowd. And you can end up on a dinner plate or you can be different. You can stand out. You can be who you were created to be. And an eagle is untouchable. An eagle soars at the highest heights and it's the greatest bird. You know, we pay homage to the eagle. And so I decided to stop trying to fit in, get off the broad road, get on the narrow road, become an eagle, soar alone. And I literally separated myself from friends who were doing things that did not uh, relate to success. It would not produce success. And so smoking, drinking, hanging out at the club, all of those things were out the window. And all of those friends who they wanted to be turkeys, they wanted to be cool, they wanted to be fit in, to fit in. And they were mad with me when I said, I'm going to do something different. All of them are in the same place. They're still in the same place to where... I was making twenty to thirty thousand dollars a year with them slaving, but when I separated and became an eagle, I started making forty thousand dollars a month, and I created over thirty <laughs> streams of income. I started four companies, and this was all just tapping into my natural gifts and abilities when I chose to mm -hmm. become an eagle. And it was you Wait, hold up, man! That mistakes, deserves right? a round of applause. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. Let that breathe for a second, man. Absolutely. Thank you, man. That's a golden stunt. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think that what I think is great is that you could have just taken that information and just kept it to yourself and continued to make that money, but you want to share it 
to the world. Right. Um, and a lot of things you've learned from your mistakes. What are some things that you can tell these students here as far as they're, they're at that point now? What could you tell them now as they're moving up and elevating? Before you answer that question, I want to come back and then open the phone line so you could think about that. Uh, okay. Tony Gaskins okay. is here first day with Kelly Kincaid. If you have any questions for him, 888-742-3345. 14 minutes into the hour. All right, 18 minutes into the hour, we got Tony Gaskins, special guest for First Day today. Yes, and he's an author and motivational speaker. And uh, before we um, left, I was asking you a question about what advice would you give the kids? But, Tony, a little fun fact as far as motivation and persistence, you got a chance to talk to Oprah. And I wanted you to tell, how did that happen? Well, I became my own publicist. Right. I started my business. I wrote a book at 22 and I didn't have any money for a team. So I was my manager, my publicist, my agent, everything. And I was pitching myself every day. I said, I want to be on Oprah in two years. I was 23. So that meant by 25, I would be on Oprah. And I looked at her list of guests and I was like, how, how can I make it? And I didn't know anybody. And they told me PR to get on Oprah would be like 10000 a month. Well, I say, well, she has a website, doesn't she? So I started going to Oprah.com every day, and I just was writing in right. um, through Tell Us Your Story. Right. And so I found an angle which was tied into the media, that, and I had written about it in my book. And I used what they call a timely pitch. And so I wrote it almost like poetry to catch the attention of the producer. And it was short, and it was sweet and to the point, and it tied into some to a current event. Right. And so they called me, and they said, we want you to come on and tell your story. And so I went on and told my story about being a toxic, you know, lover, boyfriend. That was the topic. Right. And that just kind of introduced me to the world, so to speak. And I love that story because during while I mentored um, some students as well, I feel like the millennial generation, they want everything handed to them on a platter. And I think that it's very important for you to go get it. You right. know, and I, I, I want to segue into what would you tell these students here who have the world in their hands and opportunity there? I would say don't fit in. Don't fit in. The worst thing you mm -hmm. can do is try to fit in. That's the worst thing you can do because you will be led to the slaughter. But at the same time, don't try to stand out in a way that is also attention seeking. You know, so you don't have to go, you know, paint your hair or shave your eyebrows to stand out. <laughs> But the way you stand out is by identifying your natural gift. And when you identify your gifts, for me, it was writing. I could write without getting writer's block. I didn't have perfect grammar. I don't have perfect speech. I'm country. But I could write without getting writer's block. So, but it wasn't cool growing up because we were taught to be a drug dealer, to be overworked and underpaid, or to be an artist or athlete. And so writing was considered lame. And I was trying to fit in all of those years until I hit 22. And I decided to stand out and do something that I knew I could do, but it wasn't necessarily seen as a cool thing to do. And when I did that, that's when it changed my life. So stand out. Stop trying to. And I'm telling you, you're not missing anything when you're partying, partying, when you're getting drunk, when you're hanging out, when you doing all this crazy stuff, you're not missing anything. But one thing that you will appreciate, like now at the point in my life, I'm 31 years old and I come from a place of nothing. But the fact that I can afford a ticket on a private jet, the fact that I can fly first class everywhere I go, the fact that I could take my whole family on a 10 day vacation and stay in a mansion, I love and appreciate that more than any party, more than any sip mm. of alcohol. So that's what I say. Tap into your gifts today. And if it means that you got to stay up late, you got to miss some things, you can't call everybody back, but you're focusing on your gift and you're building your business and you're adding something to the world, that's that's the greatest thing ever. Tony, oh, what phone. was your, your aha moment? Like, what was that epiphany at 22 that made you say, you know what, I'm going to leave this old route and I'm going to take a left and continue down? It was my wife. I met my wife when I was 21. And she saw greatness in me and she spoke life into me. And I believe we all have somebody. It may be a brother, a sister, a best friend, a mother, a father, a school teacher, a coach. Somebody sees you and somebody speaks greatness into you. And you have to believe in someone else's belief in you until your own belief kicks in. So the fact that I wanted her more than anything and she saw greatness in me when I wanted to be average, she kicked me to the curb. Mm. And she said, we cannot settle for mediocrity. 
You have to be great. You have to do what you were called to do. You're not a drug dealer. You're not a thief. You're not hard. You're not a thug, but you're a writer. You're a thinker. And so I believed in that and I stepped into it. Mm -hmm. And that's what pushed me. Mm. We have St. Mary's uh, high school students here um, in the theater class, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, so who has a question? Stand up. So what's, what's your name, man? Is that is that turn that mic on? Though? Okay, talk, say it again. Nico. Uh, my name's Nico. I'm and a what, senior. Okay. Good morning. Hi. So, uh, good morning, I, Nico. Morning. 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 All right. All right. <laughs> uh, so, I, I mean, as young people, I think we all know someone. We have friends or family who deal with stress or like depression and stuff in school. It was kind of growing up. What would you recommend we do? How do we deal with that? You dealing with it personally, or your friend or family is dealing with it? Both, I guess. I'm, everybody kind of deals. Dealing with, with stress and depression. You know what? I think it goes back to the power of words. And a lot of times we we take it for granted. But when you speak life every day, every day I wake up and I say, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. And if I ever feel like I'm running out of blessings to count, I literally start counting every breath that I take. So now it switches your mindset from scarcity to abundance. And you go from counting everything that's wrong to counting everything that's right. And that literally changes and shifts your mindset. So it can bring you out of a depressed state when you change the way you view things, but when you also speak it, because when you speak it, you give it life. I mean, we, ha we hear the parable of the creator when he said, let there be light. So basically that's an example to us that says words have power. Words are the power of the tongue can create life or it can bring death. Mm. And so you have to speak that positivity daily. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Nico. Yes. Practice that, Nico. See what it does for you. Every day I say, I, I, you know, people say, how you doing? I said, I'm breathing. I love that game. You know. <laughs> <laughs> still, I'm still in it, you know. Good morning. Good morning. I'm, I'm Anna. Hi, and Anna. I'm a junior. Hello, Anna. Um, so as young people, we're constantly, you know, pressured to be social. And I was wondering when you um, sort of made that choice to branch off, what happened to your friends and that sort of aspect of your life? And also um, financially, how did you deal with going from an income to no income in that span of time? Well, the first one, socially, I realized they could watch me later. You know, hmm. I realized that all greatness is birthed first from separation. You have to separate so you can elevate. And they may not understand it right then, but they'll understand it later today i'm getting texts because i'm with sway wow. and they look up to sway because he's an og in the game he's everybody's favorite in hip-hop and so these same guys who are raised by hip-hop and raised by sway now they say okay tony i see why you separated and so you have to do that and then the next thing is i balance the dream and the job so you never walk away from your job you know only for your dream because when your dream is still a fantasy but you have to balance the two. So I balanced the dream and the job. And when you do that, what happened is I was making 20,000 on the job, but I was balancing it with my dream. So instead of working 40 hours a week, I had to work 80 hours a week. But eventually my dream job doubled my day job. And then that's when I was able to walk away from the job to the dream. Wow. You know, we got a few, call by the way, great question too. We got uh, some callers on the line I want to get to. We have Alton and Georgia on the line. Good morning, Alton. Are you there? Alton. Okay, OQ, grab that for me. Let me let me uh, put it on hold. Line five, OQ. Alton, good morning. How you doing? I'm good. How are you, sir? Doing all right. Say hello to uh, Kelly Kincaid and Tony Gaskins. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What's your question? My question is, Tony, how, when you got to that point when you thought you were going to succeed and then you kind of stepped away, how did you know that you needed to do this in order to be successful and have that greatness? How did I know that I needed to do it? I knew it because you're guilty by association. And being guilty by association is one of the worst things you can do. And I realized that you become a product of who you hang around. My parents always said, you'll be like who you be around. And that's not proper English, but it meant something to me. And so I realized if I was still hanging around my friends, they wanted to go to the club. They wanted to smoke or they wanted to drink. They wanted to chase females. And I realized that the quickest route from A to B is a straight line. 
So if I'm trying to get A to B, but I'm swinging around to G and H and F, I'm never <laughs> going to get there. And so that's why I realized I had to cut it out and I had to focus. And that focus, that's what produces results. Okay, thank you for your call. We'll take one more call. Tim is in Cali. Tim, good morning. How you doing? Good. How you guys doing? Good doing morning. okay, man. What would you like to say? Good. Good. Hey, uh, I just want to commend you on what you're doing, brother. Uh, very positive, and I don't even know how many important things you have said, man. Like, I, I, I am moved. I'm touched, brother, by by what you're doing. Awesome. Um, thank you. And so many points to uh, things like, okay, I'm from San Diego. I come from the hood like you. I separated myself from everything. And right now what what we're doing is, is, is opening a preschool for boys growing up in fatherless homes. Uh, one in three boys growing up in, in fatherless homes right now in America. Wow. On top of that, they employ less than 10% male teachers. So they're not finding a male role model at home. They're not finding it at school. And we know where they find it. They find it in the hood. And that's why they end up with rap sheets. And what we're trying to do is just give these boys male role models, somebody they can look up to in their community and, 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 and become uh, uh, men that their, their communities and their families can be proud of. That's awesome. Mm. You have a question, too, sir? Please. Tim, are you just, are you just, did you want to ask Tony a question? Oh, no, nah, Tony, I just wanted to commend you, brother. There I, is, I, really, I wanted to commend you, man, and tell you what, what we had going on in San Diego. We would love you guys. Now, we commend you, too, Tim. And as <laughs> a matter of fact, um, maybe Tony could give some information on how people are tuned in right, right now could reach you on, through social media or otherwise. Right. Tony Gaskins everywhere. Um, even my website, my email, Tony at Tony Gaskins, everything. Twitter at Tony Gaskins, Instagram, YouTube, Tony Gaskins, Facebook, Tony Gaskins. <laughs> All over. And it's everywhere. Gaskins, G A S K I N S. Yes. Tony Gaskins. You on Instagram? Yes. What is it? And I posted you today. <laughs> Tony Gaskins? Yep, Tony okay, Gaskins. All right. Okay, all right. Cool. You posted me today? Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm going to post you back, bro. Um, Kelly? Yeah, I, I thank you for coming. People, check him out on YouTube. His videos are great. Get his album. It's available now called Greatness. You're going to really love it. Um, and just thank you for coming. And you're also on tour. Yes. Is that Has it started now? Yes, we're just going all around the country doing here at NYU tonight and just moving on from here. I'm trying to hit every city. We even go out the, out of the country, South Africa, Johannesburg, mm. going to Toronto in May. So I'm just spreading the message of love, yeah. real love, because that's what changed my life. Absolutely, right. Thank absolutely. You. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tony. If you want to reach me, follow me on Twitter, Kelly Kincaid, K-E-L-L-Y-K-I-N-K-A-I-D. Thank you, Sway. All right, thank you. Uh, thank you. I got the album for free. Look at that to St. Mary's <laughs> students. Don't don't envy me. All right. Um. <laughs> it's Sway in the morning. Only on Shade 45.